and welcome to Josh's Garage. I've been wanting to make a video for quite a while now about using residential refrigerators in 12 volt RV systems. There's a huge misunderstanding in the in industry about how they work, and by the end of this video I hope to show you why you don't want a residential refrigerator in your RV. <laughs> So here's the setup. Currently in the RV industry, the trend is to put residential refrigerators into motorhomes. This used to be only the super high-end models, but now most Class A motorhomes and some Class Cs come with residential refrigerators. And many don't offer an alternative option. Why? Manufacturers like them because the residential refrigerator is cheaper than the traditional dual fuel propane electric RV fridge. Owners like them because they are typically larger and hold more food than their RV counterparts, and have a brand name like Whirlpool or Maytag. And since those companies have made millions of units for decades, they tend to be more reliable. So what's the problem? That seems like a win-win, right? Well, only if you're plugged into shore power, which means you'll be camping in one of those RV parks where you're four feet from your neighbor, smelling their sewer, dealing with their three poodles, sucking down their campfire smoke, and listening to their Conway Twitty CDs till midnight. If you're the kind of RV owner that likes to actually enjoy the solitude of the great outdoors with clear starry skies and acres of fresh air, plan on running your generator a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. I can tell you firsthand because our last two coaches have had residential refrigerators and it is a constant struggle to keep the batteries from crashing when you're boondocking. You'll be checking your system monitor more than you check the time. But Josh, a 16 cubic foot residential refrigerator only draws 6 amps per hour and you have like 400 amp hours in your batteries so you can run that fridge for days. I've heard this response from at least a dozen people within the industry, from sales reps to owners of dealerships to the manufacturers themselves. People who have been in the industry for decades, and it's absolutely false. And I'll prove it. First, they're right about a couple things. The typical 16 cubic foot refriger residential refrigerator does draw about six amps per hour. And many coaches do come with 400 amp hours of capacity or more in their battery banks, but you cannot run that fridge for days. Then how long can you run it? Any guesses? Well, to understand that, you need to understand Watt's Law. Now don't fall asleep, I promise this is about to get good. Watt's Law states the relationship between watts, amps, and voltage, and they make a perfect triangle. The law states that the relationship is watts equals amps times volts. So a refrigerator that draws 6 amps per hour from a 120 volt source requires about 720 watts per hour. Now this is running watts. Starting watts is much more, but that's only needed for a second or two, so we're not going to count it. Okay, so how many amps does that same refrigerator draw on a 12 volt circuit? Still six amps? That's what most people think. But no, not even close. We can solve this using the same equation. Since watts are the constant here, we'll leave 720. And just need to change this 120 to 12. Now in order to get 720 watts per hour out of a 12 volt system, we need to draw 60 amps per hour out of the batteries. And we're not finished yet. Because in order to convert that energy, we need to run it through an inverter, which is only 85 to 90% efficient. So we need to multiply this number by 1.1, taking us to 66 amps per hour. And because you'll damage your batteries if you drain them below 50% capacity, you really only have 200 amp hours of capacity to spend here. Now, how many hours can you run your precious residential fridge? Let's see, 200 divided by 66 equals 3 0.03 hours. Whoa. But wait a minute, the fridge isn't running all the time. It cycles on and off. Yes, and this makes it a difficult problem to solve because it depends on the ambient temp, the insulation, the seal, the contents, and how often the door is opening. You would basically need to count the minutes the fridge is running within an hour. So let's just say that it's running about half the time. Still, you can only run the thing for about six hours before you need to run your generator. And 
All of this is assuming you're running nothing else. Turn on a light, a TV, or a microwave, and you have even less time. Well, that's what solar panels are for, Josh. You can put two or three solar panels up there and run that fridge. Nah. -uh. Just how many solar panels would you need to run only one residential refrigerator for 24 hours and nothing else? Have a guess? Let's do the math. And I'll be generous and assume perfect conditions here. The average maximum sunlight hours during the summer solstice in North America is about 15 hours per day. But all of those hours don't receive peak sunlight. It's only about four to five hours in the middle of the day. So the other 10 hours are producing less and less energy as you move away from peak. So let's just say that all these partial hours add up to another five hours of full sun, together making a generous total of 10 hours of full sunlight for our calculation. And I know people who have RV solar systems would love to see 10 hours of full sunlight a day, but they never see it. And we're assuming here that these panels are 100% efficient, which they're not and we're, they're aimed perfectly at the azimuth angle of the sun, which they won't be, but let's pretend anyway. And let's say we're working with 100 watt solar panels since they're the most common. The popular Renogy panels, which are super efficient, add back about 5.8 amps per hour to a 12 volt system. So one single 100 watt panel with 10 peak sunlight hours will produce about 58 amp hours of energy in a day. Wait, how many amp hours does that refrigerator consume? 66 per hour, 33 if it's running only half the time? Even at half the time, that's 792 amp hours per day. So 792 divided by 58 is about 14 panels. You'll need 14 solar panels to run one residential refrigerator and nothing else. On most rigs, you can't even fit that many up there. You'd need to pull a trailer covered in solar panels so that you could run that fridge. And still, nothing else. And although I know I've proven my point, it even gets worse because those 792 amps are produced mostly during the day, during the middle of the day. The rest of the day, they're producing next to nothing, which means you would need at least 400 amp hours of reserve capacity in your batteries. And since you can use only 50% your battery's capacity, you'll need about 800 amp hours of battery capacity. And since the typical 12 volt RV battery has about a 75 amp hour capacity, you're gonna need about 11 of them. There goes your basement storage. By making this video, my hope is that owners and buyers will reconsider the value of a residential refrigerator and manufacturers will offer other options like a 12 volt super efficient DC powered fridge, which they make now, so that owners don't have to use their RVs as mobile trailer park units and can opt to use it for adventure and exploration, which is the whole idea, right? If you're still with me, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please share it with your friends who have RVs or someone in the RV industry. That would make me very happy. And also, if you would subscribe, that would make me even happier. Thank you so much.